If you're trying to learn Tailwind and you're using lengthy courses and videos, you're actually doing it wrong. In this video, I wanna talk about why that's the wrong approach to learning Tailwind and show you a different approach, which is only gonna take you about 30 minutes and you'll be mastering Tailwind by the time you're done. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name's Kyle and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. And as you can see here, I just have a simple search for Tailwind course on YouTube. And there's tons of courses out there, you know, four hours long, three hours long, hour and a half long. And I don't have anything against these particular courses, but that's a long time to spend trying to learn just one small portion of a tech stack that you're gonna be using. Especially because usually if the video is four hours long, it's probably gonna take you like eight hours to get through it and actually really get everything into your brain. That's a lot of time to dedicate to Tailwind and you don't need to spend nearly that much time. The same exact thing happens on Udemy. You can see most of these courses are like 12 hours, seven hours, six hours, and so on. So they're much longer than they actually need to be. So what is the solution? Well, the solution is simply just to use the Tailwind documentation. And I know that sounds like a bad solution, but let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. For the most part, Tailwind is just CSS. That's all it is. All Tailwind is is just a bunch of fancy classes that they added that map almost one-to-one -to, -one to CSS. So if you already understand CSS, you pretty much already understand Tailwind. There's only about a small, maybe 5% of Tailwind that you need to learn in order to go from knowing CSS to mastering Tailwind. And of course, what you could do is you could go through and read every single article and page of the documentation. But as you can see, this is a massive list of documentation on the side here. It would take you forever to go through all this information, which is why I don't recommend you do that at all. Like I said, if you know CSS, you already know Tailwind. For example, if you're starting to write code in Tailwind and you want to get up and started, obviously go to the getting started documentation. There's like four or five steps that you need to follow and that'll give you Tailwind working in whatever you know framework that you have happen to be using. As you can see, there's documentation for pretty much everything that you need to do, or you can just jump in with a CDN and get you know up and started super easily. But once you have that simple like five step process done, then you need to say, okay, I want to style something and I want to add some padding. How do I add padding? All you need to do is just go to the documentation and just search for padding. Hit enter, and as you can see, here is a list of all of the different padding classes. There's a ton because padding is massive, but you can see all the different things you can do. So if you know that you want to add padding on the left, well, you can just know that it's going to be PL0, as you can see right here, padding left zero. Or you can say PL1, and you're going to add a little bit more padding on the left and the right. And even here in the documentation, if you read like the first paragraph that it usually has, it's going to essentially explain everything you need to know about that particular property. So you already know that padding is a thing from your CSS skills, so you can just come here and search for padding. And if you hit Control K on the documentation, it opens up the search. So you can again search for like margin, for example, or we can search for like, let's say text color. So we can just say text color. And there we go, there's all the different text color properties that I need to understand. So just to get up and started with Tailwind is incredibly easy. Like I said, all you need to do is just go to the installation steps. Like I said, it's like five steps, maybe four or five, depending on what framework you're using. And then you have Tailwind installed and you can just start looking at the documentation to try to figure out exactly what all the different properties are. Now, if it sounds like a huge pain to constantly jumping from your editor to the actual browser to check all the different documentation for things, one thing that you'll really love is if you're in VS Code, they actually have an extension called Tailwind CSS IntelliSense and that essentially gives you autocomplete for all the different Tailwind styles out there. So if you're inside of anything and you wanna like add a class, for example, I can just hit control space and now I have all the Tailwind stuff. So if I type like text, you know, for example, and I actually spell it properly. And then let's say I wanna have a color that's going to be blue. So I can say text blue and now all the colors are showing up and I can say, oh, you know what? I want this one. Or if you're doing some padding, you can say like PX and okay, here, you know what I want? Maybe PX56, for example. So if you kind of have an idea of what these different properties are called, for example, you know what? I want this to be like a bold font. I know that has something to do with font weight. So I'm just gonna come in here, type font, and oh, look right there, font bold, it's that easy. So just by using your CSS knowledge combined with this IntelliSense, you can get about 75% of the way there. For the other 25%, well, all you need to do is just open up the documentation and search for the particular thing. For example, position is a little bit confusing because it doesn't use the word position. You just need to know it just has absolute, for example. Now, some people don't like using the documentation for this particular stuff. So there are cheat sheets out there that do essentially the same thing. As you can see here, if I wanna look at font weight, I just click on this and it gives me all the different styles. It has the same information as the documentation. I just find the documentation has it laid out better as well as has additional information. So I pretty much never use any cheat sheets. Now I did mention that this will get you 95% of the way there when it comes to using Tailwind. The other 5% comes in the more advanced features of Tailwind that don't really map super well one-to-one -to, -one to CSS. And that's what I'm gonna cover for the rest of this video. I'm just gonna go over them really quickly so you can understand how to use them all. So if we scroll into the documentation, you'll notice there's the getting started section and right below that is the core concepts. It's like six, seven pages. This is everything, the other 5% that you need to know that is essentially different than normal CSS. 
The first page here is super simple. It kind of just explains what Tailwind is and the fact that it's a utility first CSS library. Highly recommend reading this and understanding exactly what's going on. It makes using Tailwind a little easier. The next page is where 99% of all the information you need to know is. As you can see, it's a rather large page. There's a lot of different sections inside of it. And essentially this just goes over all the different edge cases for handling things like hovering, focusing, you know, pseudo elements like before and after and so on because you can't handle those with just CSS classes. Normally you would need CSS to do that, but Tailwind has gotten around that. And the way that they do that for pretty much everything is whatever you wanna check for. For example, if you wanna do a hover or a focus state, you just put whatever that thing is followed by a colon, and then you apply your different styles that you wanna deal with. So anytime you have like a hover state or like an input check to see if it's checked, placeholder text is always just going to be whatever that thing is followed by a colon. Super straightforward. So like I said, this is a massive section. You can read through all of it, but that covers 90% of what you need to know. Just understanding that there is something you can put and then a colon after, and that's going to deal with all that stuff for you. Kind of the biggest other change is how they deal with grouping things. So you can set up groups inside a Tailwind for handling like if I hover this A tag right here, I want to apply specific styles to the children. That's impossible to do unless you write CSS. But again, Tailwind's gotten around that by using this group class. So for example, if I put this group class here, it allows me to modify different things. And you can see when I hover over here, it's actually making those different changes for me. Other than that, a lot of the stuff that's covered inside of here is just really basic, you know, like, okay, hover, maps to hover, colon, focus within, maps to focus within, colon, and so on. If I open up VS Code here, and I go over, you can see that on hover, I can add specific styles. For example, I can say the background is going to be a blue of 50, and that's what it's going to be whenever I hover. Now, if we look at the rest of these, you can see there's things like responsive design. So how do I handle different breakpoints? They have some built in and they handle mobile first. So essentially everything you define is gonna be on the smallest size. And then if you wanna change the sizes on larger screen sizes, that's what these specific styles are for. And again, they follow the exact same syntax, whatever the breakpoint is, followed by a colon and then whatever styles you want to define. Super straightforward stuff. They have a few other things on things like dark mode, reusing styles and so on. But overall, it's incredibly easy. And most of these pages are rather short. You don't really need to read a bunch of information. And for example, this first page here, as you can see, is not that long. You could read through that in just a few minutes. So it's a good idea just to go through those core concepts if you really want to take your Tailwind skills to the next level. But for the most part, like I said, just hit Control K and search for what you need. For example, I want to deal with hover. There we go. I'm now in the hovering section. Really, the only thing that holds people back from learning Tailwind is making sure they understand enough CSS. If you know CSS well, learning Tailwind is an absolute breeze, which is why if you want to learn Tailwind, I highly recommend checking out my CSS course. It covers everything that you need to know about CSS, and all of those skills are going to allow you to easily transition to learning Tailwind and using that in your project with all of the CSS skills that you have. If you want to check that out, it's going to be linked down in the description below. I highly recommend it if you want to learn Tailwind.